parts of a sewing machine. Okay, so this part is not that exciting. If I were taking this course, I'd be tempted to skip this part, but don't do that. Stick with me for a couple minutes because from here on out, I'm going to call the names, the parts of the sewing machine, their proper names. Not that hooky thing that's on the top of the, your sewing machine. <laughs> ha, bet you just checked it out. If I call the sewing machine parts their proper names from day one, you'll know what I'm talking about in this course and then all the other courses from here on out. So without further chit chat, let's dive right in. Basic parts. Okay, so first of all, you have your manual. Don't lose this one. Seriously, you will need it forever. Okay, so now on the side here, you have your power switch. Uh, your machine is electric, it needs some way to turn on and this usually also turns on the light that is in there. Um, this is, dizzy again, this is your power jack. This is where you insert your power cord, obviously. Down here, below here, I'm gonna pull it up. <laughs> this is your foot pedal, also known as your gas pedal. This is what makes your machine go. Um, this is your presser foot. You're gonna spend a ton of time looking at this special little lady. <laughs> she keeps pressure on your fabric so that it goes smoothly through the feed dogs. I'll tell you about the feed dogs later. Um, this is your presser foot lever. Uh, you cannot see it on this video. Oh, well, now you can. There you go. It lowers, lifts and lowers the presser foot. See? Parts related to threading. Okay, so this is the hand wheel. Turn this hand wheel to raise and lower your needle, and you can also use it to sew with, if the power goes out. You just keep on turning the hand crank, keep on turning it towards you. It will take you forever, but it does work. All right, so spool pins. This is where your thread goes. So there's your spool pin. Thread guides. Um, on here, I'm gonna tip the machine. That's easier than trying to move the camera. Okay, on this machine, you see there's arrows. There's an arrow. This is really hard to see because it's dark, but there's a one and a three up here. There's a two down there and a four down there. And that tells you where to uh, send your thread. Also, your instruction manual will tell you. Talk about that. The tension discs are inside here. You can't see them, but they work like pie pans that are squished together and they hold pinch the thread in between them. Um, the take up lever. This is the hook at the top of your machine. Sometimes it's quite hidden. So you may have to turn your hand crank toward yourself to reveal it. And there it is up at the top again. Okay. This is your bobbin winder and your bobbin winder stop right here. So bobbin winder, bobbin winder stop. This is your bobbin winding tension disc. This keeps your thread um, in an even pressure as it goes towards your bobbin winder. This time I'm going to zoom in. There we go. This is your needle. There is the needle screw right here. This is how you change your needle. There is an automatic needle threader and that is how you can thread your needle or you can do it manually. Parts related to stitch selection. This one is your stitch selector over here. You tells you what your stitches will look like. You turn this crank to select which stitch. A for this machine is straight stitch. This is your uh, stitch length. That's how long your stitches are. Um, two and a half is regular. Um, this is your stitch width. So if you were doing a zigzag stitch or another decorative stitch, this is how wide it is. On this machine, it also shows you the position of your needle. So either center or to the left. Parts related to sewing operation. This is the reverse lever or push button. Um, you're gonna hold this down to sew backwards. The thread tension dial selector, this um, changes the tension of your thread. Sometimes you need to do that for heavier or lighter fabric. Throat plate. So this metal part here, this is called the throat plate. It is removable to clean in underneath your machine. Um, feed dogs, let's see if we can see them. Okay. So we're going to zoom in to see your feed dogs. Okay, so these teethy things here, 
Those are called the feed dogs and they're what move your fabric forward. On this side of the machine we have a thread cutter. So you just, let's see if we can do that. We're going to pull our threads out and you can just cut them like so. Very handy. Um, this is a one step button lever. So this part here you pull down, it's not the same as the automatic needle threader, it's a different one toward the back. So you're going to pull this down and it stays down when you're going to make uh, one step buttonholes. And this is called a free arm. So if you have um, a sleeve that you want to sew and it's quite tight, you can put it over here on this free arm and it's much easier to get into tight spaces with that as opposed to the larger bed. For this electronic machine, there are some differences between this one and the mechanical machine. So I will show you the, um, the things that are the extra features on this machine. So this one has the LCD display and that tells you which stitch you're using, um, which presser foot you should use, um, your stitch length, your stitch width, and so on like that. Um, this is your tension dial. This here is a, um, oh, you can't even see it. Let's see, right there, this one. This one gives extra or lesser pressure on your presser foot. Um, then over here, this, I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> this one is your needle up or needle down. You push that and it stays where down. So that's handy when you are actually sewing something and you want to pivot and turn a corner. So needle up, needle down. This is a thread cutter. So you push that and it cuts your threads for you. It's not going to let me because I didn't sew anything. <laughs> Anyway, this, you start and stop your sewing there. This is reverse. So you can push that down and hold it and you will sew backwards. This one is the lock stitch. So that does the, um, the when you start sewing the very beginning, um, it will lock your stitches in place. Um, your, I'm gonna zoom out again. And turn a little bit. This is how you select your stitches. So up here, there's your chart of all the stitches you could have and you have to punch in the codes. Um, there's some basic stitches that you just push, but most of the time, if you want to use letters or uh, very fancy stitches, then you have to push in a code. 